<clears throat> making a life worth living and retirement worth having is literally about the people of our lives. The people in our lives who really know us well in our soul, who understand the love that we feel for them regardless of how they're feeling about us, that that love never vanishes, that that love never disappears, that that love never gets transferred over to someone else who looks a little better, a little younger, or a little less um, interesting in a way that we might have already always been to them. You see, practically when we're looking at how do we create a love for a lifetime, we have to look at the person who's going to live with us until our old age, the person that's going to love on us until we are dead. And frankly, that's sort of a morbid way to look at it, but isn't that the truth? That when we are in love with someone in the beginning, the passion is furious, the sex may be grand, but in truth, that sort of thing sort of fades over time. And then all you're left with is conversation, practical time together, companionship time, dating time, and romantic moments that are just snuggle time. How many men are really ready to snuggle in this world, I can't possibly say. But I do practically know that when a man is moving on to something else, he just chooses one that looks like the one before. And sometimes she does too. She picks the same type of man that she practically chose before and then she ends up in the same place she was the year before. It just happens a lot quicker because she's faster at getting there than she was with the original. Now isn't that interesting? When we talk about people, we're talking about patterns. We're talking about really opportunities and we're talking about the way that people in which our inner lives can sort of move through our lives and then come back into our lives and become more than we could possibly imagine. You see, sometimes we need space and time to really discover who a person is, but they also need space and time to discover who they are in the Lord's house. You see, there are practically men and women who totally miss each other because they might not be the epitome of who they think is the hottest person on the planet, but when intellectually they meet and when psychologically they get together, and when emotionally they start to respond to one another's um, little aspects of life, it totally transforms a relationship into something loving, worthy, and fully within the house of the Lord. You see, there are many men who can woo a girl in a matter of seconds. They know how to play the game, they know how to bring a girl along for the ride, and then they let them go. You see, it's about the conquest as opposed to about the adventure and life together. And that's the difference between a practical man and a player of a man. A player wants the conquest for a short time and then wants to move to the next. A practical man wants the love of a lifetime and won't settle for anything second best. And the reality is there is second best in this world, literally, in terms of relationships. And then there's the first that who the Lord has placed in our life because in truth it matches us fully. We have to really think about the opportunities that the Lord puts in front of us and how we are fully matched and equally yoked on so many levels, and yet there might be a part of that relationship that is totally lacking. You see, when we choose someone that is totally lacking in a particular area that we desperately need, it means they're not the fit. It can also mean that the sex may not be as grand, it may not be that physically we don't fit very well, and openly the kisses may not be as good as we'd like them to be. You see, practically in life we have to choose who we want to Lick, lock lips with, and in many moments of time, we miss out on the opportunities of a lifetime to smooch the one that the Lord has chosen for us, to make it all feel right, to make it all seem right, to make our life complete in ways we couldn't possibly imagine before. But practically, how do we love someone who's not quite whole? How do we pretend to care for someone who has a special defect? How do we love a person with a special need, and how do we help a person through a tough little journey of life? Some men will step away if we rage at them, and other women will run from us. You see, it's all about how we feel, not about what it means to God, isn't it? I mean, isn't it our feelings that produce our results, or is it the Lord who produces a plan that we either choose to be along on the ride with, or we choose to let go of, and then our life becomes sort of shit because we didn't listen to the Lord in the first place? Now, when we talk like this, we're talking about real things, real love, real life, real practical aspects of marriage, of spousal relationships, of growing old together, and the realities of planning for retirement. Planning for retirement means literally talking about finances, talking about where people are at, talking about what their assets are, talking about how to sell off assets, how to produce more income, how to take care of debts, and literally how to be all one can be for each other. And that's literally what relationships are supposed to be about. But too many people literally go into the physical only. They think, I will love that person forever because look at how hot they are. Well, the body fades and the Lord can take away the virality of a man because he's chosen to stray. And openly that sort of happens. And then there's those monstrous men that make relationships last forever, even though relationship has long been over. 
they tie us down in litigation problems, they remove us into difficulties, and they literally don't let us go because they want to have their cake and eat it too. They want to have the new girl and the old girl still in the wings. It's not really fair to the lady who's in the wings because she's not getting the best end of the deal. She's getting the tail end of the shtick, and that's not very fair to her in life. But he doesn't care because he's a selfish man and he doesn't realize that the Lord is not in him at all. Practically, the person that the Lord has put in your life might be the least likely person you would choose in your life. But they could be exactly precisely who the Lord has planned for your life because of how important the life cycle and the life soul is in each individual person.